Good day and welcome to our short explanation and demonstration of various types of touch screens. Uh, what we're going to do here is explain um, the different types of screens and then we're going to test things like the typical rubber end uh, that you uh, may have played with uh, through to a uh, stylus from our friends at Microsoft, three Dell styluses and then a generic stylus. Uh, so let's just go through the history very quickly so you get caught up so you understand what the differences are. There's really three different types of touch screens. Uh, there's capacitive, resistive, and a digitizer. So the capacitive, and this will be very short by the way, so capacitive is, uh, they were invented in 65, but they started catching on in the uh, mid-1980s. A capacitive touch screen uh, consists of glass panel with a capacitive charge storing material coated on surface, basically just a coating and uh, when you push on it, circuits located in the corner of the screen uh, guess as to exactly where you are, which means it's not as accurate as you might like. The next type is resistive, and we're gonna be very short on this uh, because it's not something that's used heavily today. Uh, basically, all it is is an overlay on the screen, and um, uh, there's, a, there's really three layers. There's a screen behind, uh, which has a positive charge. There's a spacer uh, that's transparent, you can't see. And then there's a negatively charged uh, uh, piece of plastic or glass on top. And when you push on it, you're literally touching the two pieces together. You're closing the gap between that uh, spacer and the, the front and the back piece. And that is how it is figuring out where you are. The problem with this is it doesn't feel very nice. It's not very precise. Um, it's relatively cheap. And the, the only place I see it today is in cars. So you'll, you might feel it on your touch screen of your car. The next and the newest are the uh, digitizers. Now digitizers are, you've got your glass uh, panel and then on top of it, you have a grid and it's transparent. You can't see it, but there's a lot of vertical and horizontal lines and an active stylus will pick it up. And we're gonna explain that. That's these three here and well, plus this one. That's all of these except your finger and the rubber tip. So let's get on to the actual meat of this. We're gonna, we're gonna ignore the resistive ones and just go to capacitive and digitizers. So capacitive requires electricity to flow through whatever it's touching, like your finger. So finger or rubber tip, and that means it's based on some sort of moisture content, which is why rubber tips work and your finger works, but a hard plastic stylus won't work. Capacitive screens are inexpensive and uh, they rarely have batteries or buttons. They're usually just like this. They're just sort of a, you know, a pen. this is literally a pen with a rubber tip on the end. Capacitive touch screens are really durable. Uh, they're used in a wide range of applications from point of sale systems to industrial controls, you know, because you got guys with dirty fingers and they, you know, they can't use the keyboard, so they just have to touch the screen. Uh, you'll also see them if you're at the mall. If you're at the mall and you have a uh, screen that you want to go over and, uh, and find you know where a store is, that's almost certainly a capacitive touch screen. The problem with it is uh, there's no palm detection. Palm detection is the ability for the system to ignore the rest of your hand and just focus on the point. And that is something that uh, these uh, capacitive screens are not usually very good at. Some are, some are, but not usually. They're also not pressure sensitive. So if you push a little bit, you get a dot. If you push a lot, you get the same dot. On a bright note, there's no buttons uh, to get confused about, and uh, well, rarely anyway, and uh, they rarely also have batteries. Uh, if they do, they're using Bluetooth to actually talk to the screen, or well, talk to the device. Uh, so what they're doing is they're, you're touching, and it knows where you're touching, and then the buttons tell it what to do. So I wanna right click, I wanna, I wanna drag something, whatever, I wanna erase something. Digitizers, this is, uh, this is really where it's at today, and the two laptops are gonna show you today uh, both have digitizers. They are, uh, they have, uh, again, vertical and horizontal lines in a grid. They again use Bluetooth to talk to the buttons on the devices. Uh, and they are much more accurate. Uh, they do have palm rejection, so when I'm writing on the screen, uh, it'll ignore my hand or my palm or my finger, or whatever, and it will just pay attention to the stylus, which is really great. The biggest problem with them is they're expensive. You can spend between 50 to $200 on these things. You can spend more than that too. Uh, and they can also be made to be locked down to a specific device. So for instance, the Apple Pen uh, only works on the Apple devices Apple wants it to, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so let's get to some of these demonstrations. We're not gonna show resistive because we don't have any. Um, I'm not in my car. But this, as you can see, is just a, a little rubber tip. Okay, so I can go into here and I can draw and you can see if I touch the screen or I push really hard, it doesn't really make any difference. So to be clear, 
Virtually all screens with digitizers are also capacitive, which means the more expensive screens like these Dell laptops uh, have uh, support for both the your fingertip and for the rubber tip, um, which is great. So what you'll notice, let's just show you it doesn't have pressure control. When I put a dot on here, it just gives me a dot and I can push as hard as I want. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't have pressure control, pressure sensitivity, but it does have, uh, and it doesn't have palm detection. You can see it's skipping here and that's a bit of a mess. So let's get rid of this stylus and let's go on to this unit. This is, so let's show you the ones we've got here. We have a Dell uh, 579X. We have a Dell PN577W. We have the PN556W. And we have a generic one. Now this is, uh, this hopefully will work. It doesn't say it will specifically, but it is an active stylus and it says it will work on most of these devices, including a Dell Inspiron. So uh, this is a Dell Latitude, so close enough. They're almost the same. So let's set these up and we'll go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna bore you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbox them and I'm going to put the batteries in and then I'm going to add them to Bluetooth. So let's do that right now. Now, if you've got one of these Dell pens, you'll see that they, most of them, if not all of them, come with these small little batteries as well as a large, well, large <laughs> AAA battery. Uh, and you may wonder how to get into it. Well, what you have to do is take the, take the uh, stylus and untwist from the spring and you'll see that there's this little connector in here, that uh, little slot in here that you can put the batteries. If you read the manual, they say they, the heads go down. So square end up, round end down, Let's plug this in, screw it back in. Uh, the heads on these go in, so the positive end goes down, negative goes up. Let's put that in. So I'm going to start with this generic one. We're going to go over a couple of things. The first, uh, before we even get started, the first is most of these will come, well, many of these will come with alternate nibs, so alternate tips. Uh, they'll also usually come with a little remover, uh, so you can change that. Um, my experience has been that unless you're an artist, you don't care. But um, basically, you just put the nib in there, and you pull it, and then you can put the other nibs in. Uh, for some reason, these Dells didn't come with it, but this more expensive Dell did. Okay, so I have these four or five styluses ready to go, and I want to show you uh, why you really need to check the uh, compatibility list before you buy these. So uh, basically, as I mentioned in the explanation, various devices, various active styluses using very similar technology just don't work on active <laughs> screens. So um, you really got to make sure that it fits. So let's go through this. So I'm going to go through and I'll do set up Bluetooth. Uh, I'm going to set it up with the... Uh, this is the Microsoft stylus first, and it's gonna sit there. Just trust me, it isn't gonna work, okay? This one isn't going to work either. Now this is on a Dell 5300. This is the uh, PN577W, and I can hold that. Uh, the way you do that in this case is you hold the um, erase at the end there. You press the button at the end. Won't sync, just trust me, it won't do it. And most frustrating of all, this um, a knockoff pen, well, it's really not a knockoff, it's just a, a generic one, uh, which has some pretty awesome, um, well, it's, it's very, very inexpensive and it feels nice and it, it looks good. Um, uh, it supports pressure sensitivity, has three different nibs. I mean, you know, it's a nice device. It just, I can't get it to sync either. So if I, what you're supposed to do with this is press and hold the up, the, well, the upper portion of the button on the side for three to five seconds and it's supposed to sync. Just trust me, it's not going to. The only one that will sync with this is the one that says it's supported, which is the 556W. Uh, now that is from Dell and I've already, well, let's pair it. So I'm just gonna press this now, press the button at the end. There it is, pen connecting and we're done. So let's go into paint.net and you can see here, well, maybe you can't see, but the, uh, uh, you know, the stylus is working from, from above the screen. Uh, if I touch the, physically touch the screen, it will draw. Um, you can't see it, but just trust me, it's got pressure sensitivity on there. The buttons are programmable. So I can go into uh, 
pen settings here and I can set what I want to have happen when I double click. I can, uh, in this case, it'll launch Snip and Sketch. I can have it launch other things as well. I can program all of the buttons here. And again, this is just all through Windows. You don't need to add any additional software. So it'll even convert uh, your handwriting to text if you want. So you think, well, that's just Dell. Let's, uh, let's try something else. So I'm gonna go bring up a lovely Microsoft Surface. And um, I can tell you it's the same. So when I go into settings, I, I compare the stylus that came with it, uh, but none of the Dells work and none of the, uh, well, I've tried several knockoffs. They don't work either, but I shouldn't call them knockoffs. And you think, okay, well, maybe the Dells just work with the Dells. Let's find out. So here I have a Dell 5490. Let's give that a shot. So I'm gonna to go to add device and I can tell you that these aren't going to work. And I can tell you that the Microsoft Surface Pen is not going to work. Let's try the one that just worked on the 5300. Hmm, there it is. Isn't that nice? Connecting. So that's happy. Let's try this next Dell. This is the Dell PN557W. See if it works. Nope. And same thing with the knockoff pen. And that's because they're not on the supported list. So, and again, I shouldn't call it knockoff, but there it is. Just isn't there. So if your pen isn't on the supported list, you can buy it, uh, but you're probably just gonna get frustrated. So, that's that. If you have any questions or concerns, please get a hold of us, www.urtech.ca. Thank you, bye-bye.